Hello, people. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Scotty D, and I'm going to pull the neck on this 1971 Guild D40. It was bought brand new in 1972 at Manny's Music in New York. And it's time for a neck reset because the string action has gotten to where it's 11 64ths at the 12th fret here on the bass strings. And that's with a pretty straight neck. So I want to get it down to 5 64ths, which is a, different, a difference of 6 64ths. And typically we would lower the saddle 6 32nds to, or 3 16ths to achieve the action that we want at the 12th fret. So that's my first measurement, string action. Okay, 11 64th string action. I want this to be 5 64ths, which means I would have to lower the saddle 6 32nds, which is double of 6 64ths. 6 32nds is equal to 3 16ths of an inch. Obviously, I can't lower this 3 16ths of an inch. We have to reset the neck. 3 16ths of an inch is 0 0.1875 0 0.1875 this is the first measurement that I need to calculate how much material to remove from the neck heel to get the proper neck angle one thing I would like to add before I go any further is that the, at this point before you take any of those measurements on your instrument is to make sure that the neck is as flat as it can be or is, you know, the ideal uh, relief that you would like to have in your guitar. This one has 10 thousandths of an inch relief. That's a little more relief than I need, but I'm gonna go with that for now. I'll end up straightening the neck out a little bit before I decide on the final neck angle. So let's do that. Next I'll measure the heel and I've got three and three quarters. And finally, I'll measure the neck to body joint to the saddle, and we've got 11 and a half. So we have the amount that we would like to remove from the saddle to get the proper string action at the 12th fret at 3 16 which is 0.1875. And then we take the height of the heel, which is 3 and 3 quarters, 3.75. Multiply those two together and divide it by C, which is 11 and a half. And what I come up with is 0 0.061 of an inch. That is equal to one and a half millimeter. Sounds good. I also like to take a measurement of the strings. We got 11 through 52 gauge. We got a good sound of guitar. Next, I want to stack up some feeler gauges so I get to uh, one and a half millimeters. Okay, I'm at one and a half. The millimeters are the red. Notice how the heel cap is all busted up. That'll be replaced. And it might be necessary to remove it to get this neck off safely. I'm going to score a line where one and a half millimeters would be. I'm barely even going through, you know, a few coats of the lacquer right there. I actually really have to zoom in myself to see what I'm doing. I, I don't even see that mark with my, uh, with my regular bifocal glasses. I have to put on reading glasses and a little more magnification to even see that line. I'm scoring both sides. I cannot see this line. I'm going to do one more little. All right, that should be good. Okay, now we can take the strings off.
guitar looks brand new. Jeez. Eleven through fifty two strings. I saved the st strings. Um, I'm gonna have to restring it several times to figure out the neck angle, so I just time in a little circle. And oh, by the way, this is my first guild neck reset. Well, what's taking you so long? Well, most repair techs will tell you, I'd, I'd say about two-thirds of all the guys you take one of these two would say, uh, don't do it, or I can't do it, good luck, find someone else. You know, they used too much glue. Guild, you can't take the neck off of a guild. They used so much glue, it'll never come off. Uh, oh, I've got a strategy, just in case the glue is stubborn and it doesn't want to come loose. I have some tricks up my sleeve from experience on those electrics that I've done. You probably see if you stick around or subscribe to my channel that I have several arch top guitars like the Gibson ES125 and the Gretsch um, Country Gentleman and the Gretsch Double Anniversary. I have neck reset videos on those. And if you go to my channel and you look at my playlists, you'll see a whole section of neck resets. Also like to take, I also like to take the tuners and the saddle and bag them up for evidence. You'd stick that in the sound hole of the guitar. Next, I will take out the fret. The 15th fret on this guitar is the fret beyond the body joint. And that is where I should find the dovetail pocket. I put a little naphtha along the fret to try to lubricate it, kind of help it, hopefully help it pop out of the slot without damaging the rosewood. I don't want to pull up on the fret, but I do kind of want to push down over here on this side. See if it pops out on its own. It kind of popped out on its own. Oh, next thing I'm going to do is label the base side of the fret. When I reinstall the fret, I want to install it in the proper orientation that it was in to begin with. So I always take a black sharpie and just do that. also want to put the fret in with the evidence. So we're going to bag that up and send it to the crime unit. Next, I drill the holes. In my case, my smallest drill bit, which is a 1 16th drill bit, gonna come in about a quarter of an inch from the edge. I didn't feel it. Didn't feel it again. Found it! I found the gap between the female, I'm sorry, but the male portion of the dovetail 
and the back of the neck block, the inside portion of the neck block, there's a, there's a little gap in there. And the way you want to point your drill is slightly towards the nut and slightly inward towards the center. I mean slightly. It's almost straight up and down, but not quite. And uh, you could take a guitar string, like I've got a, a G string here, a wound G from an acoustic. And the string a little bent, it didn't want to go in there now, but there. You can almost hear it. A little pocket there. For the next few steps, I like to put the guitar into my total vise number seven, and I crank it down pretty good so the guitar's not going anywhere when I try to get my knives inside of here. Oh, also this pick art's coming up. I might end up removing this in the same process. Process is taking the neck off. Next, I'm going to score a line around all the parts that are going to be separated. That means the fretboard extension from the soundboard has a bead of lacquer that should be broken carefully. If we can avoid a finish repair on the body, that would be ideal. Don't want to have to refinish the whole body because we peeled off a chunk of lacquer because we skipped a step, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to do that same thing all around the, the heel to body. It's kind of crispy sounding. Oh, you can hear it. You can just hear it breaking free. The neck is coming free from the body already. Oh my god, I didn't even have to steam it off. Okay, speaking of steam, steam is getting, you know, scarier and scarier of a thought nowadays that we've... Yeah, this is crispy stuff. Now that we've come to the age of using electricity rather than steam, um, electricity is the preferred method these days, so... That's what I'll use on this one. It's pretty thick lacquer. It's got a reddish brownish color to it rather beautiful. You see little chips of lacquer just chipping away there. Ugh. It's too bad it's crispy. But you don't want anything holding it on there while you're trying to steam it off. Just have to do a little touch up. This is called the heel cap. It wants to come right off. Not much holding it on. We gotta bag the evidence. Holy moly. May as well take it off now instead of later having it crumble into a million pieces on the floor. Step, I use heat in the form of a 250 watt incandescent heat lamp. Here we go. Probably let this run for about seven to ten minutes. A couple minutes in, and I'll start. Trying to keep track of how hot I'm getting. I 
I like to do this with the lamp. Kind of move it around, spread the heat around. I moved it a little closer. It's about five inches away from the wood. Heating up some knives. I like to put a little water on the knife. Wait till it steams a little bit, it gets hot. Feels like some sticky old wood glue is what it feels like. It feels sticky. Nothing a little heat and a little water can't penetrate. Don't, don't want to force it or anything because um, like I saw in the Stew Mac video that mentions they actually mention Ian Davlin and the heat stick and uh, it's, it's a video on the heat stick. The guy that's doing the neck pull on that video reminded us to not to force the knife in because whenever you start forcing you start diving down into the top spruce the spruce is really soft so that a sharp knife can go cut into it like butter one other thing you can put um, on the knife is de-glue goo It'll actually add a, like a little lubrication, like the water is, but it actually breaks down the glue while we're at it. Let me grab some of that stuff. Here's the de-glue goo. I'm just going to put it right here on the knife. Actually, I should have put it at the tip of the knife. Oh, it's still nice and hot. I like to use a little mylar sheet. I go with a hot knife. Once this here thing's all loosey-goosey, I take my microphone boom stand and I tie my hot foam cutters on there. I raise it up and I bring them over. And I stick them in. Might have to drill a wider hole, I don't know. Might have to re-drill a hole. Well, sorry to say there was some lost footage, but I'm going to give you a brief synopsis of all the different segments that were lost. I put those hot foam heaters in there for an hour, and it barely seemed like it was getting loose at all. I pulled it off the vise, and I took a small couple of knives like this and heated them up real, real hot. You can put them in boiling water or hold them under a heat lamp. 
And then I got in there and I started getting in between slowly. I would heat it back up, put it in, get in there on either side of the dovetail and try to break all that glue loose that they put here. They glue the, the heel to the sides, which is just ridiculous. No other, not too many other manufacturers do that. It's a bad procedure because it just, it causes a lot of problems. And then after I felt like I got that loose, I put it back in the vise and put the heaters in there. And then I took it out. I guess it was a total of two hours. I put it in my Stumac um, neck removing jig and turned the screw and popped it out. And you can see the massive amount of glue that they put right here on the cheeks. I wouldn't do that if I was putting a guitar to back together. Because uh, the next guy, you know, I just, I wouldn't want to do that to someone. Even my worst enemy, I wouldn't do that to. They put a lot of glue right here, which is a, a mistake, in, in my opinion. It's a mistake to, to gunk a bunch of glue right here. If you have a good fitting joint right here, you should only have to put the glue in this area. And, of course, right here. So anyways, um, the cleanup on this was a lot of really hot water and some different little scrapers and tools. I love this little tool. It's like a little spade shovel. And you can set it in boiling hot water and go in there and get right into the corners and just put it in the boiling water, give her a couple scrapes, wipe it off, boiling water, rinse and repeat. Rinse, lather, repeat. Rinse, lather, repeat. It's a bunch of that. But I'll tell you one thing, if I were to do another guild, I'm using steam. I'll steam it for about 5-10 minutes, flip it over, do the same thing I did, getting the, the heel removed from the sides. Flip her over, give her another 5 minutes of steam, and I think it would, I mean 2 hours is too long to spend on one of these. Um, it just, it, it gets on your nerves. Thank you.